Hello and welcome to Ultraviolet Network's Use Case Explorer. I'm Matt Sharif and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Fortis SASE Secure Internet Access Use Case. Let's start with what is Fortis SASE. As we've covered in a previous video, Fortis SASE is Fortinet Secure Access Services Edge offering. It's built on known Fortinet technology, so it's nothing new. That, but Fortinet handles the orchestration for you as opposed to you having to handle that. Plus, it's resident within the cloud as opposed to your own data center. The three Fortis SASE use cases, the three main ones, are going to be Secure Internet Access, or SIA, Secure Private Access, which is SPA, and Secure SAS Access, which is SSA. In this video, we're going to be focusing on the Secure Internet Access. Now, is it should be noted that these three are not mutually exclusive. That means you can use all three use cases or just one of these use cases. Before we get too far into this, let's take a look at how things used to be. For one, back in the day, oh boy, aging myself now, the way people would work remote is that if they needed to access the internet or um, internal workloads, they would connect via VPN to a VPN head in and from there uh, either access the internet and internal apps. Now, one of the reasons behind this is that um, internal information security as well as compliance wanted to make sure that the users were within acceptable use policy. It's not that they were spying on them, it's more ensuring and limiting the liability as well as the security exposure for the organization. Some of the downsides of this, though, is the need for larger um, internet pipes to accommodate all the additional bandwidth, as well as larger firewalls, routers, or whatever else is acting as your head end. As the industry uh, modernizing moves forward, the remote access component was still there. If you still needed to access a uh, internal workload you accessed via the VPN. However, VPN clients got smart enough that they said, okay, anything internal will send over the tunnel, but anything going to the internet will go ahead and um, send that out directly. And that was really good as far from a cost perspective, because now we didn't need to allocate an additional amount of bandwidth for remote access for the internet, and we didn't need larger firewalls. But the problem to that is that not we couldn't very much ensure uh, acceptable use policy. And with some organizations, that was fine, but with other organizations, this can open up a massive security risk. So some organizations adopted um, the split tunneling with DNS filtering, which worked well enough. However, there was very little uh, granularity. It was either you want to allow this FQDN or you don't. You don't get to filter based off of the URI or the URL that comes after the FQDN. You also don't have, you can't block IPS signatures. You can't block an, um, known virus signatures and you can't be granular with their access to cloud services. To top it off, some organizations, especially during the pandemic, moved to a pure SaaS slash cloud model. Okay, great. We no longer have data center uh, assets. Everything resides in the major cloud providers or it's all uh, SaaS based. That's great. And I understand there are many large organizations, if not all of them, the largest, the Fortune 500, Fortune 1000, whatever you want to call them, that still have on-prem data center assets these are not the target devices for this use case. Now, I am not saying Fortis SASE SIA is only for um, small businesses or those who have moved to the cloud. As I mentioned earlier, these use cases are not mutually exclusive. So if you use secure private, private access along with secure internet access, you could very well fit this within a large enterprise. However, this sole use case may not be perfect for large enterprises. You would need to adopt at least the secure private access uh, component or some other remote access uh, uh, capability within the Fortis S use cases. Back to the topic, I digress. So with these workloads going directly to the cloud now, the DNS, uh, web filtering or the DNS filtering isn't wasn't robust enough for 
to meet the security demands of an organ of organizations. This is where Fortis SASE comes in and they add, not only add um, web filtering, but also uh, next generation antivirus, IPS, deep packet inspection, application control. So you can get very granular with what um, web services or web applications uh, folks can use. So it makes it a lot easier to deliver that same kind of on-prem next-gen firewall capability delivered through the cloud. Now, as we go through this, uh, the assumptions are you have access to a Fortis SASE admin console and that you're using Fortis SASE tunnel mode as opposed to secure web gateway mode. Enough slideware, let's get to the fun stuff. So once you get logged into your Fortis SE instance, uh, we're, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna onboard a user. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this. I'm going to walk you through actually putting in the invitation code. However, if you have a large number of users, this isn't really practical. What you can do is you can reach out to Fortinet TAC and they can build you an installer with the invitation code already built into it so that when you push it to your uh, workstations, they register up with Fortis SE and the appropriate instance. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at my art, uh, my uh, workstation that we're working on here. It does have Forta Client. It's installed, but that's about it. And we can get to just about anything. So Google, let's say Google.com, right? And then, but we don't want to allow access to Gmail.com or Mail.Google.com. I've done some pre-work here. So one of the first things we're going to look at is VPN user SSO. As you can see, I have set up Okta. So we're going to go ahead and use my Okta sign-in information to go ahead and do this. Now, once you've set this up, and there's a very helpful video here um, using Fortis SE with Okta, go ahead and onboard users. You're going to go ahead and um, and put their uh, email addresses, or if you wanted to create a distribution group so that you only had to put one email address in, um, you can also download the client there, and they're going to get an email with the invitation code. But once again, I suggest that if you're going to do this on multiple endpoints that we do, that we contact TAC, and they build the installer for us with this invitation code. I'm just going to copy this for now. All right, so we'll go back here, launch our Forta client, and through the magic of video editing, we've gone ahead and added our invitation code. Now, one thing I do want to uh, point out, what, before you deploy this, you need to make a few decisions. Uh, if you go to endpoint profile, this will be enabled by default. Auto connect to Forta Sassy, force always on VPN. For this video, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off right now. It's probably already trying to get me to connect. And if I go back here, I'm surprised it hasn't tried to get me to connect, but that's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and click SAML login. And we'll get a push notification. Now you will notice something, and I cover, I skipped over this on purpose. We're going to get stuck in connecting. We will never connect. And if you're familiar at all with 40 client SSL VPN, there's a reason for this. We did not set a policy. So let's go ahead and take a look at our policies and security profiles. So the first thing we're going to do is I have this ultraviolet profile that I created. What I did is I cloned the default profile and uh, created a new profile. And I've made some uh, changes here. Okay, so let's say we wanted to block access to, so we're allowing access to all of these. I'm gonna change all categories to monitor. The reason why we want to monitor is because it'll actually log the activity. That gives you forensic data later on if you wanted to uh, uh, follow that up 
due to any reason. So if we said Google, and I did a search for Google, you can see we can access uh, just about anything Google. But maybe we don't want to access Gmail. So I can either, let's try Gmail. So we'll just block all of Gmail. Add selected, and the action is block up here. Okay, great. Perfect. So, if we go back to this guy, he's still stuck at 40%. So, we're going to go ahead and disconnect. And again, I will validate that hey, Gmail is accessible. Perfect. And we have this. Everything else is set, every other category is set to monitor. And we can go to a policy. By default, uh, Fortinet has done us a pretty huge favor by creating a uh, deny botnet. So this is what we would call a threat feed. Um, this is a FortiGuard botnet CNC server. So uh, we don't need to add that. And if I went ahead and created this policy and call it UV INET access, and the source scope could be all or just VPN users. And I can specify the user. In this case, it's going to be our Okta users. And, and the all internet traffic, the service, I can get granular. Uh, do HTTP, HTTPS, or I can say all. For now, we're going to say all. The action is going to be accept. I'm going to change the profile group from default to the ultraviolet profile. The action again is accept the status is enabled and I'm going to log all sessions. Okay, perfect. So now we actually have a, a policy that will enable us to have secure internet access. So also enable us to connect. So if we do the symbol login again, that time it, because the cookie's cached, we should connect. There we go, past 40%. going to exit out of that tab, let it finish connecting. Okay, we are connected. You can see. So now if we were to go in here, take a look at our dashboards and we take a look at our status, managed endpoints. This is our endpoint, and it says the VPN is connected. Great. We can go back to our endpoint real quick. And if we go to Gmail, we're not going to go very far. If I go to Google, great. If I go to mail.google.com, this isn't just an FQDM block. This is an actual application signature block. So I can Google my heart out. What is Florida Sassy? Okay, great. But these will not, we will not be provided access here. Great. So if we take a look at this really quick, you might think that, hey, maybe there's something else going on. Is it truly Florida Sassy that's blocking you? Well, that's where we've got the logs. To actually validate that. So internet access traffic. So if we can take a look at this. We shouldn't have a lot of logs here because we only have the one guy. And there's our Gmail TCP reset from the client. Again, Gmail TCP reset. So we're actually blocking this. The the what we really care about, you know, the action is so much so that it's blocked. It's UTM blocked because our application control profile calls for it. And that really, in a nutshell, is a secure internet access use case. So in this video, we went ahead and onboarded a user to Fortis Sassy. As we discussed, it's probably more practical for you to request a pre-populated installer with the invitation code as you push these out to your workstations. Um, we went ahead and built a policy and application control um, profile. Now just keep in mind, I we did cover the application control aspect of this. You can also apply IPS signatures, antivirus signatures, please. It's just I was trying to keep this video as short and as uh, limited in scope as possible as to not bore the daylights out of you.
And last but not least, we went ahead and connected and showed how the, in the logs how uh, things were being blocked. I hope this video was helpful for you. I'd like to thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe us. In the next video on Fortis SE, we're going to talk about the secure private access. So until next time.